film director, our next speaker is responsible for hashtag still speaking up deep truth campaign that received more than 120 awards worldwide, the most awards for a campaign in the history of Mexico. Additionally, she's been working as a cutter for films and short films that have also received awards at national and international film festivals. And today she's going to give us an insight on what made her the incredible storyteller that she is. Great to have you with us, Karen Gomez. Hi, everybody. Well, I have notes, and I'm, I'll try to speak so quick because there's a lot to say, and I don't have enough time. Um, well, my name is Karen. I started working as an editor like 19 years ago, and recently I changed careers and I started uh, directing. And it's been like great two years. Um, well, I'm talking to you today about this campaign, still speaking up. I'm super proud of being part of this campaign. Um, it's been a long road, and it has like a huge welcome around the world. So it's been really, really nice being part of this campaign. Um, well, but first, I have to give you a lot of context uh, so you, you can understand like the deep of this issue in Mexico and, and the uh, reach of the campaign. I hope this is the button. Okay, so here I'm presenting the horror data that it's no more than uh, everyday news in Mexico. I would like to uh, talk about each one, but I don't have time, so I'll I make it quick. Well, from all the countries in the world, Mexico is the known war country most dangerous to be a journalist. So you can imagine what it is to be in the middle of the war, uh, running from the bullets or waiting for a bomb to drop in your head. Well, it's kind of like what it is to be a journalist in Mexico. OK. Uh, the next horror data, it's there is 164 murdered journalists in the last uh, 22 years, there's a mistake. It says 200, but it's 2,000. Um, and maybe, I know you can think it's not that much. It's 20 years, and 20 years is a long time. But it's an average of 8.2 journalists every year. And we, this leads us to the, our next, next horror data. <gasps> Where is my screen? <laughs> it died. Well, the next one, I, I remember this year, uh, it's been, oh, I have it here. This year, uh, it's been 11 uh, murder journalists so far, so this year will be the worst of history. Um, the next one is that from every five attacks to journalists, two come from the government, which is creepy, right? Uh, in Mexico, it's said that we have a narco state. Um, this doesn't mean that the president is a drug dealer, but it means that they push a lot to laws, they push a lot to things happen the way they want it, and at the end of the day, money moves the world, so uh, they have a, a really uh, influence in the government. So if the government and the narcos are mixed, it's a really difficult a uh, thing to fix. Okay, um, the last one is that Mexican society is used to, de to death and violence. We are not a violent society, but we are used to it. Every day in the news we see, I don't know, like 150 bodies found in a common pit, and the next week are 50, and the next week are 80, so uh, we can't keep up with that. Uh, we have a rate of 11 women disappearing every day, so it's a really violent place. So we are used to it. When you are exposed to this kind of violence and tragedy, you like, lose the sensibility of it. You are not shocked that much because it happens all the time, every day. And 
Of course, when it comes to uh, the death of a journalist, it makes like one dead uh, headline, but the next day you have to move on to the next tra tragedy. So uh, it doesn't get like the attention it should. So we are moving to uh, the starting of the idea. The client is Propuesta Civica. The Propuesta Civica is a group of, uh, of uh, lawyers uh, representing the families of the journalists. They do it pro bono, so they are really heroes. They have n almost non resources, and they are, I think, four people uh, working on this. So um, we started uh, working with them, and they wanted that people start talking again about the journalist and stop seeing it like a daily thing, a normal thing, so people can, can get, again, the capacity to be outraged by all, all this uh, happening with journalists. So they ask us for uh, a campaign. You'll hear me here talking about uh, the we person, including me, uh, in, in part of the creative process. And that's why, because as a nonprofit organization a project, there is never uh, money or resources or people wanted to work for free. So the few people that uh, work in, in this uh, campaign, we have to do a lot of jobs that usually we wouldn't do. As a director, I always get the ideas uh, like digested, and I just think about the visuals and how, how we will make the storytelling and the narrative. But in this case, I have to work since the beginning and some parts of the creative process. Let me see if I'm missing something. Oh, her name. Her name is Sara Mendiola. She is the executive uh, director of Propuesta Civica. So we came up with this idea, still speaking up. Still speaking up, uh, like to summarize, is an always on platform for journalists to speak freely, even that once. This campaign has many stages. We already did one, stage one. Today I'm talking about stage two and there's a st and straight stage three uh, coming in the next year. So uh, I think it's very important for you to know a little about the first stage of the campaign for give you the context. The first stage was about uh, reviving Twitter accounts of journalists so they can uh, still publishing what they were investigating with when they were dead. And Mainly, they were killed because of these investigations. So the fact that you could read what they wanted to say and, and the things they were killed for was super powerful. But we knew that Twitter was maybe a narrow uh, platform. It didn't have like a long reach. So uh, we thought it would be great to make uh, four audiovisual pieces to introduce the journalists. As I told you, this happens uh, like almost nothing. It doesn't have like much uh, interest. So we thought that people uh, should know the stories of each one. I'm showing you the four one. The first is Javier Valdez. He sido periodista estos 21 años y nunca antes lo he sufrido y gozado con tanta intensidad ni con tantos peligros. Han asesinado al escritor y periodista Javier Valdés Cárdenas. Hasta el momento el caso no tiene avances. Pero no hay que olvidar que un crimen así se comete, porque el que lo comete sabe que no va a ser castigado. Exigimos verdad. Exigimos justicia y exigimos castigo para los asesinos de Javier. Well, these kind of videos help us to people to share this uh, through other social uh, um, social media platforms. So it was easier to get into Facebook or into YouTube with an audiovisual piece. The second piece is about Miroslava Bridge. 
perdió la vida a la periodista Miroslava Bridge. Ayer por la mañana, pues un hombre se le acercó a su camioneta y le disparó en ocho ocasiones. La reportera iba acompañada de su hijo al que iba a llevar a la escuela. El móvil del homicidio apunta al trabajo periodístico de Miroslava. ¿Qué le pide la familia al señor gobernador Javier Corral? En el caso de mi hermana, que su muerte, como tantas otras muertes que hemos sufrido, no sea en vano. No es normal que salgas de tu casa y sepas que estás vigilado, hostigado, amenazado. No es normal que hayan en tu medio de comunicación y mucho menos es normal que nos sigan matando. ¿Qué quieren los periodistas? ¡Justicia! The third one is José Armando Rodríguez. Mi hijo no le hacía mal a nadie. No, 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 no. ¿Por qué? Es que no mataron a un reportero, le pegaron a toda una generación. Los estatales nunca hicieron nada, 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 nada. Armando sí andaba muy asustado porque sabía que eran amenazas reales. Su mirada, así como esta parte de aquí, Siempre la tengo muy presente, sus, sus bromas. Lo extraño mucho. And the last one, Moisés Sánchez. Y estos señores que se llevaron a, a mi hermano, lo regresen con vida. Todavía están a tiempo. Si no le han hecho daño, todavía están a tiempo. La Procuraduría General del Estado de Veracruz confirmó que el cuerpo hallado hoy en una zona rural se trata del periodista Moisés Sánchez, desaparecido desde hace 23 días. José Moisés recibió una amenaza del presidente municipal de Medellín de Bravo, Omar Cruz Reyes, quien advirtió en una reunión que le quería dar un susto. Vinieron por él, su cámara y su laptop, o sea, su material de trabajo, donde saben que él guarda sus archivos. El chofer y escolta personal el alcalde de Medellín de Bravo, de apellido Meneses, que si le podía hacer un favor muy especial, le comentó que tenía que desaparecer una persona de nombre Moisés Sánchez. Ok, so this is just the context. And now we are in the point of talking about why I'm here today uh, talking about, that is speaking of stage two. Um, For this stage, we decided to work with Javier Valdez. The first video you saw was Javier Valdez. He was like the more recognizable journalist uh, at, the, at the time, so we wanted to use him because we needed for this second uh, stage. Um, we, we made a deep fake that I'm talking about in the next slides. Well, Here I'm talking for the first time in slide 16 about the creatives, they will be thrilled. Um, uh, the, Diego Wallach, he is the VP of Publicis Mexico. Um, Andre Kukakkin, I hope I'm saying the last name right. Um, he is Russian, but he was at the time the VP of Publicis Riga, and myself in a good day. Um, so, The three of us did this campaign. If campaign st in, in the stage one have a few resources, this has even less. So we have to do a lot of things. We didn't have a post-production company, so we did it by ourselves. Uh, Andre did it in his computer. I filmed it, and we, we make like, a lot of jobs, the three of us. Um, Andre and Diego went to a global meeting uh, in Romania from all the, the uh, creatives of, the, the, the head creatives of uh, Publicis offices in the world, where they present their creative jobs uh, twice a year. So Diego went with the stage one of Still Speaking Up, and Andre, uh, his campaign about uh, deep fake. And I, I imagine that they look at each other and hearts and sparkles came out of their, of their eyes because they fell in love with the possibilities of each other's uh, work. So uh, they start working on the idea, and we decided to work with uh, deep fake technology. At the time, it, it was like a shinier than today. Today, we have seen it a lot, but uh, it was a challenge because 
uh, deepfake has not a good reputation. At least it, it, ha it didn't have it at the time. Uh, I, I don't know if that has changed a lot, but we saw deepfake used for Obama to say something he would never said, or for girls' uh, faces appearing upon video, or for trivial things like putting your face on, on Kim Kardashian's body, but it, it hasn't been used to make a um, serious thing, uh, something that really helps or, or try to make a change in society. So there was a challenge that people didn't perceive it like, like a game, and people get the serious of this issue. And there, there was always a thought that we had that if we didn't have the family uh, support for this, we, we wouldn't uh, do it. Because there, is, there was a fine line, fine edit line in using uh, the image of a dead man saying things that you're not sure if he would want to say. So we approached to the family, this is Griselda Triana, is Javier's widow. Uh, she's also a journalist and a writer. And we couldn't go to her just with a keynote saying, uh, we're making a video about your husband with a fancy uh, software, because we felt it wouldn't be the same like the idea of it that, that once she saw it. So we made a pilot test, Andre and I, with a production guy from the agency, and luckily he worked very well, the height of his ears, his brows, the shape of his head. He, he didn't look like him, but he had some features that helped us. So uh, we, we did a trial and we showed it to her. We wanted her to feel it and to know if she was going to be comfortable with this, seeing his husband again. Um, she loved it. She said it was amazing to see him uh, speaking again, and that it helped her that, at that point, the voice wasn't his voice, because it helped her to take some distance from what she was looking at. Uh, she not only was on board since the beginning, along with her kids, but she asked us to write the speech that he was saying. As she worked with him closely every day, she was the one that knew the way he speak and the things he would say. So she wrote the speech and we thought that was the best way to do it. Uh, then Diego edited a little um, to make it shorter and to put some blunt uh, end of phrases, but the essence of the speech is made by Griselda. And she also gave us a Javier's hat for the video. She wanted like a part of, of his husband to be for real in that video. So it was really uh, touching and really powerful for us and for her and his kids. So finally, you're seeing the case that gave us all these awards and that has traveled around the world. I hope you like it. In the gran majority of the country, it's the crime organized el que manda. Y claro que yo tengo miedo. Han asesinado al escritor y periodista eh, Jesús Javier Valdés Cárdenas. ¿Qué es el país del mundo lo más dangeroso para los periodistas? No es ni el Afganistán ni el Irak, donde las violencias son pourtant cotidianas. Es el México. Y han pasado más de tres años del asesinato del periodista Javier Valdés. Hoy volvió. Vea de qué manera. Señor presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador, el 15 de mayo de 2017 fui asesinado por órdenes de alguien a quien no le gustó lo que publiqué, pero aquí estoy, como me ve, hablándole. No solo son buenos periodistas, son prudentes. Y si ustedes se pasan, pues ya saben, ¿no? Lo que sucede, ¿no? Yo no tengo miedo, señor presidente, porque no me pueden matar dos veces.
eh, de verdad fue, fue una sacudida la campaña el día de hoy, ha sido, ha sido de verdad una revolución. Los periodistas asesinados no se pueden olvidar, tenemos que seguir eh, exigiendo justicia. Porque esos reporteros siguen hablando. Aunque quieran callarnos, seguimos hablando. Thank you. Every time I see it again, I, I start like crying. <laughs> um, Well, so I think uh, when you see all that, you get uh, a, a broad idea of what it is, the whole campaign. It's not just this stage. It, it has begun since the first one, and it will continue. So I think this is where uh, this campaign matches with uh, ADC's um, ideas create reality. Uh, Because with this, we are trying to create a new reality. In fact, uh, we wanted to that people get the capacity to outreach again for the injustice in our country, and this helped a lot. It also get a lot of uh, notoriety around the world, so it helps a lot. After the campaign was uh, launched, there was six convictions of uh, Javier's uh, murder, so it's awesome. Um, And I think this helps uh, to start a movement from society, <clears throat> not from government, it will never happen, but starts like step by step, uh, making people more aware of uh, everything is going on. So maybe in the future, close future, we wouldn't need campaigns like this. Thank you. Okay. I would like to ask you if you feel that an environment that is so violent, is it something that tries to kill off creativity or do you have the feeling because it's violent you need creativity to survive? Well, always uh, I feel like in... Latam, we have like a so bad environment, and there's what creative uh, ideas uh, burn. Uh, when you have like a shitty situation, sorry, um, is when you want to create something that helps that change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, I see ideas from other countries that have more like rights and a better situation, and I say, yeah, well, you have not hot water, okay, but I'm dying, going to school. Mm -hmm. So I think when things are bad, it's a great uh, place for creativ creativity to grow and to help and to make really changes to society. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> 